Hi, s b i r d s community. Thanks for having me this time again. My name is Kyohei. I have been a software engineer for 14 years or so, but being in front end field just recently, like two or three years. Today, I'm going to talk about s b i r d s Native, a framework that enables you to build native mobile. Native mobile apps for iOS or Android. I assume most of you have heard of it and some of you might have actually tried it. I myself have tried it recently and that was so fun. I really loved and would like to share how smooth I could switch between Svelte and Svelte native code bases in development. So, this talk is going to be for you if you're interested in trying Svelte native in your product. Before jumping into the topic, I'll share the context that I decided to use s v e r t Native. I currently work i n g for a startup called Hyde, and they're building a unique platform where you can take back your personal data from the megacorps, get rewarded by participating automated analytic service if you'd want, while keeping your data secret to anyone, even to us. We have one challenge here. We rely on OAuth, but at the same time, we must not touch the authorization code and access tokens in the process on our server side. Otherwise, we would be a middleman breaking users' privacy. To overcome this, we had to build OAuth client to be publicly audited and importantly run token requests in the confidential Kubernetes cluster that accept only publicly audited container images. As you see, this is a little involved, so I had to prove that the concept would work in advance and it successfully with the browsers. But as a matter of business, we needed to make sure this would work with mobile apps as well. Also, I didn't want to expand the technology stacks too broadly for our teams. Otherwise, our small engineering team, which is three developers, including me, would be Overloaded by the context switches between them. If we could write web and mobile both in Svelte, how would it feel nice? That's why I decided to try Svelte Native. So, what is the Svelte Native? It is a framework for building native, na native smartphone app with Svelte components. In the context of React ecosystem, you, you'd have heard of React Native. As the name suggests, in the overview, they share most of the concept, both allows you to write user interfaces, mobile or native apps with familiar syntax and concept in web. Biggest difference here between Svelte Native and React Native is Svelte Native is also a compiler. In contrast to React Native that resolves JS logic s at runtime, Svelte Native does most of the job at compile time, so it allows more, more slick user experience. So, I think two of the most interesting selling points or value of Svelte Native are developer ergonomics that comes from the Svelte syntax and concepts and the reusability of the code. I have been using React Native for quite some time, mostly for gig works. In those days, there was a quite common misconception in clients over there about how much code would actually be reusable between web and native apps. When I was new to React Native, I also naively assumed that the most of them could be reused, and it was true in theory, but, in, but less in reality. So, I would discuss mostly, mostly about the code reusability here. Since I believe great ergonomics of Svelte syntax is well established and discussed already in this event, Svelte native supports HTML, Tailwind, or many other things you love in web development with Svelte. Let's see how Svelte components in both contexts look similar. This is an example of the components taken from the Svelte Native tutorial. Look at how it is nicely formatted just by copying paste it、uh, from VS Code to Keynote. It's, it's really in the same structure with Svelte. Let's compare this to the similar example from the Svelte tutorial. You find they look very similar. Don't you? Actually, both can have a tuple of the markup, script, and style block. They can both recognize JS or TS TypeScript natively.
But at the at the end of the day, they rely on the different technology, namely DOM for one, native components for another. This makes it hard to reuse code as much as in the common misconception I mentioned here. Since I since if a component have DOM elements inside, it cannot be used in Svelte native that run outside browsers, and vice versa. Here is simplified version of dependency graph. DOM elements or native components are in the bottom of the diagram. They cannot coexist, so more components contain them, less can be reused. To achieve maximum reusability, let's move code. We will need to move code to higher portion. The lowest hanging fruits are the pure business logics. Pure business logics. As Svet FAQ mentions, they are likely to be the first ones to be separated. In our cases, long before native, uh, native apps required for us, uh, we had separated already those out of the components. To use them in the endpoints in Kit and to make them easier to test. We had already organized the modules to be placed either under Dara-lib or Dara-lib client or Dara-lib server so that they can easily find out in which context uh, modules should be used. So with this background, I was, oh no, it was straightforward for us to assume the, module, the modules under Dara-lib Dara or Dara-lib client would work on the native context. And that's where pure business logic separates. I hope junior engineers also can enjoy this talk. So I want to let me. I want to brief what business logic looks like. This is the example of the component that contains business logic, taken from the tutorial as well. This part. I'm sure no one would find any meaningful interpretation in just A plus B. So let's give them a little more concrete name. So then this becomes a BMI calculator. And as, I, you, and as you would understand any technical concern, and as you understand, any technical concerns wouldn't matter to differentiate of BMI. They will be uh, calculated with this formula, weight over height squared, no matter either on clients or on server side. This is an example of business logic. Actual scope of the term highly depended on the context or culture or school of thoughts on architecture, but ideally, they are supposed to be a function or a class that doesn't affect it by other technical concerns like networking, data persistence layer, or more importantly in this talk, user interfaces too. They should be determined no matter where it gets executed in the browsers, server, or mobile apps, or any other context. That's why they tend to be called with pure. There's no clear distinction between UI concern, user interface concerns and pure business logics. It's not unlikely that you implement business logics unintentionally into a Svelte component. This example also shows how a business logic tends to be intervened in the UI concerns. I like referring this as a discovering business logics. You can sculpt sculpt out a business logic like this, just like you discover a sculpture in the marble. In the same analogy, you, you sometimes unintentionally build a marble which a sculpture or a business logic already, already is in. I'm sure you've done this many times ever. It's also called some, something like refactoring or architecting. They are all about uh, extracting a business logic. They, you extract them to organize code bases well and get better sites on it, but also it helps you reuse it in the another context. This is this applies here in the same way. Okay, back to the topic. Once pure business logics has been separated, data fetch should come next. Since fetch is available in native script and Svelte native, 
It is also trivial to, to use helper class that use fetch written for kit in native counterparts. Actually, I love this part most in Svelte native. I, I hadn't worked on the mobile devs these days, but when I was there, I remember people used to struggle to find or, which, uh, or decide which is a good HTTP client to use on the native apps. I don't know what it is like recently, but having Fetch built in JS runtime feels a huge win for me. So once you have a thin data fetch layer that depends on just fetch and business logic layer, you're going to be able to reuse the data fetch layer and the APIs behind it, hopefully written as the endpoint in the kit itself. And the, com and the components. But, but the bottom line first, I don't think it's a good assumption that, the, that you can reuse Svelte components written in Svelte native. I would explain the possibility in, in theory first and the reality that where it's not and why. In theory, some components seem to relatively easier to migrate, those which are abstract enough not using HTML element, DOM element directory. Take an example in the tutorial game. This just imports another Svelte component and doesn't depend on anything else itself. So if you'd inject corresponding version of nested a component called nested for web and native respectively, the same would work in theory. The challenge here is to reuse the component that directory con contain DOM elements. It wouldn't be impossible to abstract them away. If you would inject corresponding version of nested comp or a component called nested for web and native respectively, they seem would work in theory. Challenge is to reuse the component that directory contain DOM elements. It wouldn't be impossible to abstract them away to the component that share the same interface but use a HTML elements or native components inside a proprietary like this. But I don't recommend to do this because of too low ROI. In reality, components in Svelte native app would be like this. It's unrealistic to make make wrappers for all of them, all of these um, native components used in here. Especially you are interested in Svelte native because of the limited amount of the resources in the first place, like us. In the end, those are the exact concerns user interface library is trying to solve. They shouldn't be abstracted away. They shouldn't be abstracted away carelessly, or will be too risk, too leaky abstractions. I hope they could be like mobile webs where we had we had to develop separately long ago, but can be single components nowadays thanks to responsive CSS. But at least at this moment, native components are too different from the DOMs to be unified. Unfortunately, writing native components in Svelte native is fun and effective enough. It might feel like non-dry at the beginning, but you'd gain a good balance of dryness and optimization not too eagerly. So finally, we would be able to reuse three kinds of the code out of the five boxes in this diagram. 60% amazing. It's joke aside, but this is worth knowing for when you want to assess how Svelte native would make native app make make them make native development easier. Let me conclude. Svelte, Svelte native is a framework for building native apps with UI components written in Svelte. It's a it's a thing that that I would call it as a plugin of a native script if we would draw one the barrier for you. Svelte native would be a good fit if you are in a small startup or do hobby project and also if you love Svelte economics and would like to write similarly must be great fit. Combining with the web built with Kit, most of our code bases are written in Svelte mindset. Less context switch means to deliver more value quicker and better. Great. Unfortunately, we hadn't released the app yet, but we'll do really soon, like in May or early June. If you'd like to try it out, feel free to send, ping, uh, send a private message in Discord. 
and like really likely to uh, re really love to get feedback. I would invite you to internal test. So thanks for joining this talk. Happy native hacking with Svet. Bye bye.